outside and one for the end intelligent as fellas get Listen, let's settle this, be clear I could fall back seven years Still it ain't no one ahead of me Consider it a blessing if you get to stand next to me Five star general, OG veteran What's up everybody, welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. So I've gotten plenty of questions on my Instagram, emails, Facebook, even in the comment section on my videos. What do I think about the Boston Lloyd video, the Team 3CC video of Boston Lloyd with the other guy, um, uncut, raw, something like that. I'm gonna fix this fucking camera angle, make this shit fucking square. What do I think about this video? Um, a few people have covered it already. Lowliner's covered it, I think uh, Louis Marco's covered it. A few people have covered in general. Now, let me just start by saying that, you know, Boston doing what he does is just his personality. You know what I mean? He's pretty open about things, and he doesn't give a fuck. He just plain old doesn't give a fuck. If you think it's right or wrong that he's making these videos, he can give a fuck less of what you really think, and that's honestly the truth. It's not an act. He really just doesn't give a shit. I mean, the kid stresses out about fucking very little. I mean, it's just his personality. That being said, the reason why people are asking me, and Boston actually knows this as well, is because before there was a Boston Lloyd, I was Boston Lloyd. There was me. I was like the precursor to Boston Lloyd. I just didn't run around talking about it. You know, everybody was very secretive of shit back then. But the crazy shit that Boston does, I've already done and then some on top of it. And I've done it even crazier to a tenth fucking degree. Now, let me explain. There are things that I've used in the past that Boston never will be able to use. Things that, you know, I mean, everything he's done now, I've done. But in the past, we had stuff like actual... USP, pharmaceutical grade testosterone suspension from Steris. Boston will never use that. Nobody will because it's not no longer made. Any of the suspension that's out there is either black market or stuff from other countries. That's not US pharmaceutical grade. Pharmaceutical grade Nangelone Decanate from Steris. Never going to be able to use that. Ludolase, which I don't even know if this shit's fucking produced anymore, if you could even get your hands on it. It's called PGF2. It's not the, the pharmaceutical brand. It is a veterinary brand. I fucking used that shit back in the day. When Synthol came out, you know, Boston's known for 3CCs, 3CCs. Motherfucker, I was using Synthol back in 99 or 2000. Whenever it first came out, there was a message board called Mesomorphous. And I was pretty close with the guy who owned it. And there was a company out called um, Synthrol Pump and Pose by Chris Clark. And they were trying to promote their product, which was Synthol. Everybody was fucking not talking about it. They didn't know whether they wanted to use it. Not a lot of guys were using it, but the guys that were using it, Ernie Taylor, etc., etc., those guys didn't want to talk about it. So I was like... I'll give the shit a shot. I want fucking arms. I always wanted a fucking 20 inch arm. Like I'll give fucking pump my arms with the 20 and whatever happens, if it works, I'll fucking promote your product. Well, they didn't get up to 20, but my arms did get bigger. And I was the fucking poster boy on this web fight for Synthol. Not the fucking guys really using it. The fucking, you know, pros and stuff. Me, I was the one that admitted fucking I'm using it. This is what I'm fucking doing. And they would send me free bottles of actual Chris Clark's pump and pose for payment. That's how I got paid. Now I've done... 3 cc's, 3 cc's, we used to get barrels that were 5 cc's and 10 cc fucking barrels which I've actually done injections of synthol with 5 cc's at a fucking time in my arm. Yes, I fucking, I have done it. And we had a hard time getting needles back in the day, you couldn't just buy them at the store. You had to fucking get, know somebody who was the fucking uh, a nurse or something like that to get them for you. We reused that shit over and over and over again, fucking cleaned them out with alcohol. I mean, there were times that we used a fucking 10cc fucking barrel. This is no fucking joke. You'd have one fucking pin you'd put on. You'd put a fucking half a bottle of test, a half a bottle of deck, a 5cc of each in this fucking goddamn syringe and fucking shake it up, shoot fucking half in one ass cheek, fucking take it out, shoot fucking half in the other ass cheek with the fucking one needle on and not even changing it. I mean, I, I'm dead serious. This is the shit that happened. A little story time to go along with the fucking craziness. Now, I'm talking a lot about myself, so I want you guys to understand where I'm coming from. I'm seeing this from a different point of view than Mark Lobliner or these other guys. I shot synthol in my fucking abdominal muscles. Okay, I fucking saw this guy, Ahmed Hadir, who was um, an IP pro, and he had these thick abdominals. And I figured, since a lot of these pros are using it and not talking about it, this motherfucker's probably putting it in his abs. And I have very thick abs from top to bottom. Like, the size of them are very thick. So I was like, this motherfucker must be shooting that synthol shit in there. So I actually loaded up fucking two cc's of synthol and shot each abdominal muscle for about a week I was doing it. And I was using an inch and a half needle. So it was about that fucking long, the needle. I sat down to do the fucking shot one day. I pushed the needle into my abdomen. It went straight through. I was only pushing in about maybe an eighth of the way in, injecting into the fucking in the muscle. I pushed that and I slipped and the whole fucking needle went inside my fucking abdominal. 
it was behind my abdominal wall. Whatever the fuck was behind there, it was poking into. And I'm sitting there with a fucking barrel sticking out of my fucking stomach, looking down. I'm sitting in a chair and fucking, I'm like, holy fuck. I'm like thinking, I'm like, what the fuck did I just puncture? I'm like, oh my, I don't even know if I'm going to die. Am I okay? I slowly pulled the fucking needle out and no blood or anything came out. I fucking just kind of paid attention to what was going on for the next 24 hours, see if I was okay. And I was, and I never did the synth all on my abs again. So I've done synth all on my fucking traps before, uh, my traps, my fucking rear delts, my shoulders, my front delts. I did not ever do synth all on my pecs, but I've done um, injections of like IGF and stuff like that in my fucking pecs. I mean, you name it. I never injected synth all on my calves, but I did do injections of Winstrol on my calves when I was younger. I did, did injections of in my tricep head with fucking Winstrol. I mean, you fucking name it, I literally have done it. I was using insulin before anybody even knew how to fucking use it. I read a Dan Duchesne article, asked a couple people, asked a doctor, couldn't figure out how to do it, fucking said, diabetics do it like this, let me fucking try it. Bought about insulin, did it. You know, so to say that, you know, me to call Boston reckless would be a fucking hypocritical move. I'm not going to call them reckless. You know, um, we didn't talk about it back in the day. I didn't tell kids about it. We didn't advertise it. Everything was very secretive. Now, Boston comes out and does the video about what he's doing, and here's what I see, okay, and Boston, I hope that you're watching this too, Boston, I've actually talked quite a bit on the phone, and talked about things, and, you know, he's actually asked me questions, I've been around so fucking long, and does so much bullshit, he wants to know what I want to think about things too, I think that honestly, putting the information out there, it's entertainment value, it's shock value, it's going to definitely get his fucking name out there, more people again are talking about him, it's what he does, he's very good at marketing himself, he's also not scared to say what he's doing, He's not scared to fucking say, I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks because he really just doesn't. Now, that being said, everyone has to take their own personal responsibility on their shoulders. Kids are going to fuck themselves up. I was doing this shit long before there ever was a Boston Lloyd. Long before there was everybody, anybody even talking about doing this shit. I already had my own ideas and was experimenting. So I do think that kids are going to do what they want to do and people are going to do what they want to do regardless of whether Boston shows this or not. I do think Boston is going to influence kids to try it. Because it seems like not such a big deal when he's shooting all these things his body doesn't really care. They're going to think it's not a big deal and they may try it based on that. Do I think that's fucking right or wrong? I don't think influencing kids in any direction doing something negative or illegal is a good thing. That's just my personal opinion. I also worry about the legal ramifications for Boston because a lot of people are under this whole like, well, peptides are legal. Peptides are legal to buy for research use. If you buy the peptide mix it in the act of injecting into your body, you're now doing something illegal, okay? Synthol is legal to sell. However, when you purchase it, take it and inject it, you're now doing it in an illegal activity. Just like in the UK, you can buy steroids or you can, you can take steroids, but you can't buy them. Like there's, I don't understand the laws. I don't agree with them, but that's the fucking fact. It's, it's still illegal to inject peptides. It's still illegal to inject synthol. You know, talking about shooting testosterone suspension, there is no prescription for testosterone suspension as far as I know in America. So you're getting uh, an illegal substance from another country, which means it's imported from somewhere, okay? Or it's a bootleg, it's produced by, by a not a pharmaceutical lab. So you're producing pharmaceuticals, then you're injecting it on camera, admitting that you actually have this stuff in your house, which is illegal to have, to possess, to, um, to, to make, to inject. I mean, you're, you're showing a lot of illegal activity. It's like me doing fucking cocaine on a fucking, you know, or smoking weed, you know, like, you know, there are fucking rap, rappers and stuff that were smoking weed and shit in people's faces, putting shit up before weed was legal. You know, like, it doesn't make it any less illegal. It just means that fucking nobody grabbed them yet. Now, here's what my, my personal thinking is. You were going only, only going to go in the face of law enforcement so much and slap them fucking back and forth before they go, fuck you, you're the example. And what they will do is they build a fucking case and they will let you fucking hang yourself by that rope fucking over and over and over again. So they have such a fucking slam dunk case that you can't do jack shit about it. And I see a young bodybuilder like, like Lost Boston who has a huge following. That everybody knows who he is. Doing a shit ton of illegal activity. Basically promoting it to kids that it's okay. And thinking nothing's going to happen because nothing's happened so far. Boston, listen to me. Okay, we've talked about this. Listen to me. I have friends that are still in prison for very small amounts of drugs that they had. Now, I'm not talking about street drugs. I'm talking about steroids, okay? I had friends that went to jail for getting a couple of bottles of, of fucking steroids shipped to them in the mail. They actually went to fucking jail for it, okay? All the things that you're doing, think about it. Don't think about the kids. Don't think about fucking, you know, anything else. Think about what's going to happen if they do decide to fucking come after you. All the evidence is there, and there's not jack shit you can do. And I know you. You're not the type of guy that wants to fucking go to prison. You're not the type of guy that wants to spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to fight it. 
while they fucking put you in prison or they put you out on a fucking bond that is a ridiculous expensive fucking amount. You don't want to do this shit. You know, and I'm speaking straight from the heart because I still have friends that are in jail. I still have friends that have fucking paid a lot of fucking money and had their fucking lives ruined because of steroids, which was such not a fucking big deal. And I still think personally, it's not that big a deal used responsibly, but it is the fucking law. And if you're doing something like that over and over again in the fucking face of politicians, which they fucking hate this shit and fucking pro athletes can't use it and fucking get away with it. And you're doing it. Eventually something somewhere is going to come around and fucking, you know, I'm going to have to fucking bring you a file baked inside of a fucking cake so you can get yourself out of the goddamn fucking jail cell, you know? So, you know, my thing is, I don't think, you know, first of all, if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. If you want to watch it, watch it. Um, whatever you do, I really believe in personal responsibility. And I believe that as a kid, a teenager, you know, um, an adult, it doesn't fucking matter. You are responsible for yourself. And just because Boston White does something, you know, like, you see people on TV all every fucking day smoking cigarettes, fucking driving fast. Doesn't mean they go do it, you know. But bottom line is there is some responsibility there as a role model, which Boston actually is now to a lot of kids. And you do have a personal responsibility to do the right thing. But again, it's not about the kids, Boston. Think about yourself at the same time. Biosetraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biosetraining.com is the blog. It's the Think About It Boston Bicep, and we're out.